Welcome back to All Things Lord of the Rings with your host Alex, also known as Solanus Dracon. I'm going to take a moment to thank Q0W1E2R3T4Y5, good god what's up with that name, and Jenny L. Kilgore for dropping me some lovely encouraging comments. They're literally what's kicking me into getting on with this script. Today we are wrapping up the story of Baron and Luthien, also known as the Lay of Lathian. So, when we last left off, Baron and Luthien infiltrated Angband, stole a Silmaril, and Baron got his hand bitten off by Karkaroth, who then proceeded to rage and rampage across the northern lands. Thorondor and his eagles deposited B and L at the borders of Doriath, and that's where we are. Now, they lived for a little while in the wilds of that land, and Luthien was pretty content to keep on with that life. Baron, however, couldn't let her do that in good conscience. After losing his own family, he valued the bonds of blood pretty highly, and thought that Luthien should be able to be with her father and mother again, and live in a proper life of luxury, and not like a pauper in the woods. Also, he did swear an oath to return to Manigroth, so there is that too. Doriath had been in a tizzy after Luthien left, and Thingol had been desperately trying to find out what happened to her. Melian had started to clam up, saying more or less that Thingol would have to wait and see what happened, as he's the one who made the decisions that led up to the situation in the first place. So Big King L.U.T. started doing his own recon. The last he heard was from Keligorm, who had sent a letter back when they were chillaxing in Nargothrond, smugging about how they had Luthien, and he wanted to marry her, and that Felgund had died, and probably so had Baron. This pissed Papa off, and he sent some spies to verify the info. But by the time these spies had gotten there and back, Luthi had already escaped, and so Thingol no longer relied on his own intel. He had bigger problems, though. Karkaroth was rampaging across the northern borders of Doriath, and that was kind of a priority. We all remember that Karkaroth swallowed the Silmaril when he ate Baron's hand, and as much as it burned him, it also empowered him. We are looking at a rage beast devoid of all reason, filled with indescribable pain, and completely unstoppable. Even the girdle of Melian couldn't hold him back. He was in Doriath, and he was fucking shit up hard. So this was obviously a great time for Baron and Luthien to return. When they showed up and Luthien led Baron in front of Thingol, Papa was amazed and yet pissed because he still didn't like Baron. He was all, so what's up with your promise? And Baron, and possibly the greatest line I've ever encountered in a Tolkien book, responded, It is fulfilled. Even now, a Silmaril is in my hand. I'm just missing that hand. Okay, that last bit was my own paraphrasing, but god damn it, J.R.R. God damn it. Whether it was the fact that Baron had gotten that far, or that all dads love dad jokes, Thingol softened up about him instantly and let the two kids tell their story. Further impressed by the tale, he finally relented, and the two were formally recognized right then and there, essentially married. As nice as that was, it had to wait. Karkaroth was coming, and now that everyone knew why he was so unstoppable, trousers started to brown. So, Thingol started gathering up a posse of some badass hunters, such as Mablung of the Heavy Hand, Beleg Strongbow, Best Dog O'Huan, and Baron himself, to go hunt down the beast. I think we know where this is going. Luthien didn't come with for this mission, sadly. She was sick in some way or another. Maybe she suffered Arwen's disease and was only good in an action role for one movie, I don't know. The hunting party came upon Karkaroth having a drink from the Esgalduin River, and before anyone could do anything, Huan jumped out and started the fight. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment when Best Doggo met the greatest werewolf who ever lived, as was prophesied. Karkaroth dodged and made a pass at Thingol, but Baron jumped in front with a spear. He got the spear smacked out of his hand and was pinned by the wolf and bit to hell a little, but Huan caught up and jumped on the monster's back. They fought like only alpha mongrels with god powers could fight. It was literally Dog of Heaven versus Beast of Hell. Their fight fucked up some countryside. Now, while that was going on, Thingol had been kneeling beside Baron, actually worried about his new son-in-law. He may have taken a lot of effort to win over, but once his loyalty was earned, 
Elu Thingol, the elf king formerly known as Elway, stuck by someone. Huan won the fight, killing the Dreadwolf, but unfortunately his wounds were mortal. With his last breath, Best Doggo flung himself down beside Baron and spoke for the third and last time, wishing him farewell. Dicks out, ladies and gentlemen, dicks out. With Karkaroth dead, his belly was cut open and Baron's missing hand with a Silmarill found, completely untouched by its time inside of a monster. The hand pomped out, leaving the jewel behind. Baron, unfortunately, was also mortally wounded from the fight, but when the Silmarill was placed in his hand, he roused long enough for them to bring him back to Menegroth. Thingol, with a heavy heart, declared Baron's quest fulfilled and his own doom complete. Baron got one last kiss from Luthien, and she whispered to him to wait for her in the halls of Mandos before he passed on. Not long after, Luthien's spirit and body withered, and she too passed on and joined him across the sea. And so this quest of the Silmaril ended, but not the Lay of Lathion. Luthien's soul joined Baron's in the Undying Halls, and sang her final song in front of Mandos. This song was the most beautiful, the most touching, the most sorrowful song that any mouth ever sang, mortal or otherwise. It moved Mandos, moved him to pity, moved him to grief, and most importantly, moved him to mercy. While it was not in Mandos' power to change the fate of a mortal soul, he brought the case to Manwe, and Manwe, going deep into meditation, brought the case to Eru himself. Eru Iluvatar decided to strike a deal. Luthien would have two choices. She could either go ahead and let Baron go, because the fate of humans is to die, and she would be guaranteed her proper place in heaven without him, or she could return with him to Middle-earth and give up her immortality. There would be no promise of joy or happiness, and both of the two would most certainly be fated to die again one day, but this time her spirit would be treated as if it were human, and she would pass completely from this world, just like Baron. Bay chose the second option. No matter what the future held, she would not be parted from her beloved. She gave up her birthright and her namesake, went back to Middle-earth with Baron, revived, paid one last visit to her father to clear his mind, and then they both buggered off to live in their life together in peace and quiet, and that's where we're going to cut it. So that concludes The Lay of Lathion, the story of Baron and Luthien, the greatest story ever told among elves and men, among Valar and Maiar, upon the face of Arda for all of time. Thank everybody for watching. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solonis Dracone, and this has been All Things Lord of the Rings. Goodbye.